Hello everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Great Basin National Park BioBlitz. If you're here for the first time, my name is Amy Springer. I'm a graduate student at Utah State University. I study insects and genetics and how insects adapt to changing environmental conditions. And I will be your instructor for this final series on Hineptera, which is suborder Sternorhynchia. So, Sternorhynchia. This group includes the plant parasitic hemipterans. And I want to note that all hemipterans are plant parasites with very few exceptions. Um, the assassin bugs are carnivorous, they are an exception. But most hemipterans are plant parasites. They feed on plant tissue and plant juices. However, this group is a little bit different. Suborder Sternorhynchia is characterized by species that don't just feed on plants, but are in many cases attached to their host plants in a very real way. Some Sternorhynchians don't even have legs, so they have no wings, no legs, they just have a beak, and it's stuck into the plant and they are permanently attached there for their entire life. So it sort of takes parasitism to another level. These are truly parasites of plants. But before we move on, as I have done in previous videos, I want to take a step back and look at what this name means. This is a another long Latin name. Uh, Sternorhynchia is a bit of a mouthful. So what's its meaning? The prefix stern is Old Greek for chest, like sternum. And rhynchia, as we saw before with Okanorhynchians, is Old Greek for snout. Thus, the sternorhynchians, literally translated, are the chest snout hemipterans. To orient you here again to our hemiptera family tree, so to speak, in this video I will be covering sternorhynchians. And in this introductory portion, I will just be going over basic life history of Sternorhynchians as well as some ecology and identification features of the suborder. And in the next videos of this series, I will be covering the following five um, families that I've chosen because they're fairly common. Uh, Allirotidae, the white flies, Aphididae, the aphids, Coxoidea, which is a superfamily, which includes scales and mealybugs, Adelgidae, which are the um, spruce aphids. They're not really aphids, but they do live on spruce. And finally, superfamily Siloidea, which includes the jumping plant lice. So, another note about the name. I'll get over this eventually. But Sternorhynchia, as I mentioned, means chest snout. And I just want you to know that their beak does not actually emerge from the chest, as I've shown in Herbie, my cartoon hemiptera in here. But in many species, the rostrum or piercing sucking mouth part they use to feed does appear to emerge from between the front legs. This isn't a perfect character for identification, so don't take it to heart, but to show you why these suborder was named this way, I want to show you a picture of a real Sternorhynchian. So here's a little Sternorhynchian. This is a psyllid, or jumping plant louse, and you might look at this picture and say, that looks like a mouth, and it's at the front of the head, not at the back of the head. But in reality, that little black speck you see right here, that is its mouth, that is its beak, and it does really look like it's coming out of this insect's chest. If you were able to see the underside of this picture, you would know that that black beak extended all the way up to the head where it's supposed to be, but from this angle, it does look like a chest snout hemipteran. So, back to our little Herbie the Hemipteran cartoon. A few characteristics of note that make Sternorhynchians unique. 
Uh, most Sternorhynchians will have long, thin, filiform antennae, meaning their antennae look like a long string of thread, and the entire length of the antenna is about the same diameter. Most Sternorhynchians will not have wings, a few of the adult forms will, but the majority of them do not in most families. This group of insects only has one or two tarsimeres or foot segments on the latter half of their legs, whereas in Ocanorhynchans, most species will have three. And the rostrum may or may not appear to arise from the chest, but in all cases, unlike heteropterans, the uh, group of hemipterans with the leathery wings, um, in Sternorhynchans, their head is tucked down like this, so it's facing their belly, which appears to make their beak, it makes it look like their beak is coming out of their chest or their neck, its rear-facing mouth part. So just to compare and contrast to Ocanorhynchia, the free-living hemipterans, Ocanorhynchians will have bristle-like antennae, that little hair poking out, just a tiny little hair on each side. The adults will almost always have wings, and they will be very mobile. They can jump very well, they are strong movers, and they can move quickly. In contrast, Sternorhynchians hardly move at all. Some of them can crawl, very, very few of them can actually jump, but by and large, Sternorhynchians are sedentary. They are couch potatoes of hemipterans. And again, Ocanorhynchans will generally have three tarsimeres rather than two or one. So, I've got a few pictures here of real hemipterans to take a look at some of these identification features for determining the suborder of hemipteran we're looking at. So, this guy right here is a sternorhynchian. We know it's not a heteropteran because the wing is entirely membranous. There's no leathery portion in front as you might see in a box elder bug. And the antenna are filamentous, which means they look like a long thread. In contrast, the ocanorhynchians, these are both delphacids. I chose these because in my opinion they look the most similar to some of the sternorhynchians you might see, so they're more likely to be confused. Again, we know that they're not heteropterans in this case because of that uniform membranous wing. And again, you can barely see it, but that's a little bristle right on the end of those antennae. So these two bristle-like antennae are echinorhynchans, and this guy over here on the left is a sternorhynchan with the thread-like antenna. To recap, if you have found an insect and it has a piercing sucking beak near the back of the head, you know that you have a hemipteran. And it's going to be one of two suborders, a canorhynchia or sternorhynchia. Two, if your insect has uniform unsegmented wings or no wings at all, you know it is not a heteropteran, so it's either going to be a canorhynchia or sternorhynchia. And, number three, your insect has long filiform or thread-like antennae with no more than two tarsimeres on the latter half of their legs, you likely have a sternorhynchian. I do want to make a note, though, quickly, that um, these are sternorhynchians. These are scales. And as you can see here, uh, I'm not even seeing legs. Sternorhynchans are kind of the weird blob-like group of hemipterans. So, I'll add a fifth point. If your bug has a beak, so you know it's a hemipteran, and nothing else, it just looks like a blob, you probably have a sternorhynchan. So, a few notes about sternorhynchia. These families within this suborder constitute some of the most uh, prolific and economically important agricultural and greenhouse pests. Most people are familiar with aphids, they're a common garden nemesis, and sternorhynchans are also known for having complex and unusual life cycles. For example, viviparity, or live birth, 
is where an insect gives birth to live young rather than laying eggs. And this is really unusual. So right here on the right, I have a picture of a female aphid. And what's happening here is this female aphid has undergone parthenogenesis, which is a type of cloning. And so she cloned herself, basically. And she brooded her baby clone inside her abdomen. And she is now giving birth to a live, walking, breathing aphid. And again, the long filiform antennae, and many species in this suborder will produce large amounts of cottony wax. Sternorhynchins are, as I mentioned before, also the couch potatoes of the Hinipterans. Many don't have wings, some don't even have legs, so they don't move a lot, if at all. So if you're looking at a bug and it's moving quickly, you probably don't have a sternorhynchin. Again, only one or two tarsomeres. And another really interesting, and not completely unique, but fairly characteristic trait of sternorhynchins is a lot of the species in this group modify plant tissues to form galls, which are basically expanded um, tissues of plants that have been modified by the insect to be beneficial to the insect. They basically build themselves a little plant house inside of a leaf or a twig. And finally, as I mentioned before, many sternorhynchins don't look like bugs at all. Some of them don't even look like they're alive. So if you find something that you think might be a bug, but it looks kind of just like a little scale or it looks like a little rock that's glued onto a twig, you may have found a sternorhynchin. And finally, an overview of a few of the common families, which I will cover in the second two videos of this lecture series. Allirotidae are the white flies. Aphididae are the aphids. Coxoidea is the superfamily containing scales and mealybugs. Adelgidae are the pine or spruce aphids. They're not really aphids, but they call them that. And finally, Siloidea, the jumping plant lice superfamily. So, for more information about life history characteristics and ecology of these families, take a look at the next two videos, and hope to see you there.